Every season of Survivor is a story. There are main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a good story. It will grip you and have you rooting for someone and against someone else. You will want to tune in episode after episode to see what happens next until it all finishes with a, hopefully, satisfying conclusion. Each story we look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end, from the time that they are introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. With that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. Before we start, I want to thank you all for supporting this channel. If you want to see these videos weeks before they are released on YouTube, then consider supporting this channel on Patreon. That Patreon also has exclusive Survivor podcasts by myself and guests, and all money goes towards making more content for this channel. With that out of the way, let's start the video. Welcome to the story of Teresa Cooper, a castaway on Survivor Africa. As a preface, this video will only be observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned as the story and characters here have no idea and therefore are unaffected by those future seasons. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. I will not be interpreting it with a modern mindset. Therefore, someone flip-flopping in the Australian Outback may be a smart move, but it would betray them as a villain. Whereas in a modern season, this would be smart and it would not reflect poorly on them as a person. With that out of the way, let's open the book on Teresa Cooper of Survivor Africa. 39 days, 16 people, one. Survivor. Teresa Cooper, AKA T-Bird, a 42 year old mother and flight attendant hailing from Georgia, finished in fifth place and was the last remaining Sambaru member. While she didn't make a big impact on the Survivor community at the time, it is clear upon re-watching that she was miles ahead of some of her fellow castaways when it came to strategy and how to reach the end of the game. So what exactly did the last Sambaru member do that shows an evolution in the game of Survivor? Let's take a look. The character type of T-Bird may seem strangely similar to our previous winner, Tina Wesson. They're both mothers of two, both have been flight attendants, and both are from the South, and both of them come across as super nice. This is a very fair comparison to make, and seeing T-Bird immediately draw these mental comparisons without you even fully realizing what is happening. And similar to Tina, they are both buried in the first episode when it comes to content. Our only confessional from T-Bird is in regards to how her tribe is struggling to get a fire going and how that is a real frustration. As hard as we were working, we just couldn't seem to get it. And then, of course, we were tired from the, from the long day. It was getting dark, and that was you know, a big frustration. It isn't really anything to go on when it comes to who T-Bird is. And her tribe even wins immunity. So once again, we will have to start with episode two to get our real introduction. From here on out, I will limit any comparisons to T-Bird and Tina, but I did want to preface with that introduction because I do think they're very similar. So the first time we hear about T-Bird as a character is from her tribe mate, Frank. You see, Sambaru has eight members, four young and four old, and T-Bird falls into the older camp. Frank is explaining how the younger kids do nothing while the older folks are working hard. You know, Linda and Teresa, you usually don't even have to ask them. They're up, what can we do? This makes T-Bird come across as a hard worker. Next up is when Carl and T-Bird have this short exchange. Trust me. I trust you. I trust you from day one. Immediately following that, T-Bird finally gives us some insight into what she thinks about those around her and how she views the game. I really like the younger people, but I just feel like for me to stay in the game as long as I can, I need to be on the stronger side. She essentially states that she likes the younger tribe mates, but she feels like her survival in this game is more dependent on the stronger tribe mates, so that is why she is siding with the older side of the camp. 
Later on, Frank is now talking trash about these lazy young tribemates, and instead of confronting him, she approaches T-Bird, which shows a certain level of trust and connectivity. Lindsay had heard Frank say that Silas was on board with us. Of course, me being pretty direct and not wanting to be dishonest, all I could say was, yeah. Her tribe wins immunity in the second episode, so once again, there isn't any strategic decision she has to make here. So far, T-Bird comes across as someone who empathizes with both sides and seems to have gained a certain level of respect and trust because of that, but she isn't wishy-washy to where neither side knows where she stands. And as of now, she's shaping up to be an under the radar sweet lady with a hard work ethic and maybe, maybe a little bit of sense of what kind of strategy she should be utilizing. Episode 3 begins and the Samburu tribe is at odds with each other. This actually is not a surprise here in episode 3, but it is clear that so far there are 4 people against 4 people which won't fly at tribal. No one has votes against them, so how would a tie even be decided? The older Samburu members see Silas as a possible option to flip and to make the numbers 5 to 3. However, T-Bird has been observing Silas and his behavior and thinks he may be playing them as a double agent. And in fact, she's right. Was it the four of us voted one way? Right. And then they he would get them to split their votes so he didn't come out being the bad guy. My gut feeling just says he's he's playing playing both sides. She lays out exactly what he is doing, which is being strategic while no one dislikes him. It's actually a classic Dr. Sean from Borneo move. So this next move is tough. Samburu loses immunity and has to go to their first tribal council. This makes things go as kind of how we expected. The vote is split four to four between Carl and Lindsay. We have a tie. And the re-vote is split three, three. We have another tie. T-Bird's strategy of sticking with her alliance of older tri-mates is now solely dependent on whether Carl can beat Lindsay in a game of knowledge based on a survival handbook that they were given. Carl unfortunately ultimately loses and is sent home packing, which puts T-Bird in the precarious position of being down four to three due to Carl and not necessarily anything she did wrong. However, this is bad for her current strategy. The tribe has spoken. It's time for you to go. Following Carl going home, episode four begins with the older tribe mates of Samburu acting, well, immature, kind of in the way they've been making fun of the younger tribe, they're now acting exactly like that. They don't like the younger players holding the majority, so they act very immature. I said I was taking it out of fifth gear as far as responsibility, you know, accountability, organizing things, and I was gonna sit back, they were the majority, let's see how they run a household. I would die to be on this team. Let's just let me on the team. Linda, this morning really came unglued. Kim, you know, it's over. It's, it's, it's we're over coming now. together now. It's, 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 it's over. over and out. Thank you. So I'm, I'm so However, smartly, T-Bird does not participate in these shenanigans, but she is associated with the people doing the shenanigans. I would like to read this. You read it. You read it. No, no, no. Why don't one of you read it? Ready to be on the team. Frank, Ready to be on the team, honey. Can I have a hug? You said you're even hesitating. Give me a hug. Her tribe loses immunity again and she's on the wrong side of the votes. However, her choosing not to be immature may be the biggest reason why Linda goes home instead of her. Tribe spoke. It's time for you to go. Episode 5 is here and the younger tribe mates of Samburu are mad at Frank and T-Bird. You were punishing us no. because we wouldn't tell the you. The three of us had no idea who was leaving. Punishing. No, no, no. What, no. This is how it... You no, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. It'll come what? Wait, what? Let's do a quick rewind to episode four. You see, Silas thought he had this brilliant idea that because him and the younger tribe mates have the obvious four to three advantage, that they will tell the older players who to vote for. So who's going tonight? Since we're so open. Yeah, okay, yeah, I like well, that. Hey, I know this open. sounds crazy. Going we know it's one of us. Yeah. Lindsay already has four votes against her. Whoever's being voted off tonight should vote for Lindsay. And what's in it for us? Nothing. Silas. 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 
T-Bird and Frank saw absolutely no reason to listen to Silas and follow his plan as it only benefits him, so they laid their votes on him, knowing it would hurt him if there was ever a tie and he was involved. With that, T-Bird tries to explain why they voted the way they did, but none of the younger tribe mates care to listen, and this was truly a lose-lose situation for her. You wanted to use the power over to screw us for the game. I understand that. Later on, she's telling us how the younger players are constantly trying to remind the older players that it's just a game and to not take things personally. But T-Bird says, I don't know. It, it, I, I felt so good last night. I feel so good right now because I know we got to them and it, it feels good. Thankfully, the tides turn for her as this is the first season with a tribe swap. Her, Frank, and Silas go over to Baran, and this gives her a new life when it comes to survival. Silas, Teresa, Frank, you guys are now members of Baran. Oh my God. T-Bird wastes no time integrating with the new tribe as she talks to Kim Johnson and explains how she was at the bottom of her old tribe, which makes her appealing for Baron to work with. Silas recognizes how this has rejuvenated her and Frank's life in the game, while this kind of shoots him in the foot. Do you think this is a cool thing to have happened? Frank and I thought, are we going down this way? Right. Just because the fort, you know, we- so Obviously so... either you or Frank was next. Right. Baron loses the immunity challenge, but T-Bird's social graces have finally put her in the majority voting position and Silas goes home. This is a great thing for her short-term game, but it doesn't seem like it would do her many favors in the merge when tribes typically band together and vote the other one off. Travis spoke. Episode six comes and goes and we don't hear from T-Bird or see her involved in anything important. This is compounded by her tribe winning immunity and she makes it another episode. Episode seven is here and as past seasons have told us, this means the merge, or as some people call it, the merger. To put this into perspective, Sanburu is down six to four as they lost Lindsay in the episode six tribal, which means T-Bird has an uphill battle to survive in this game. No other season has had a tribe down in numbers going into the merge, and immediately after the merge, they do their first individual immunity challenge, and it is an endurance challenge that ultimately comes down to T-Bird and Clarence. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow. Clarence is truly worried he is going home since he has been on the hot seat since the episode one Bean Gate incident. Uh, we covered that in a different video. He tries cutting deal after deal with T-Bird, but she doesn't budge until after six hours, he offers, hey, let's play rock, paper, scissors. Whoever wins gets the immunity idol. Whoever lose has to drop the bucket of water in their head. She plays along and beats him, paper covering rock. Paper covered rock. She wins individual immunity. My dear, get this. Thank you. Congratulations. Following that challenge, the tribe arrives at camp to find a feast fit for a survivor king or queen, or we'll just call it the merge feast. Everyone is thoroughly enjoying themselves except Frank. He's being very antisocial, which isn't completely unlike him, but it does stand out here more than other times. T-Bird finally speaks up and asks him, hey, come join us, which he reluctantly does. Come on, Frank. Oh, happy mind. Frank is a very big loner. This is good on T-Bird since Frank is her closest ally and she needs to have people like him so he doesn't go home first. Also, it shows she is a genuine person who cares. Here's to my new 10 friends. Aww. Then I'm excited to spend the next adventure with. Right before Tribal Council, T-Bird lets us know in what seems at the time to be a very random confessional that she won't vote against Clarence since he upheld his end of the bargain when she beat him in the rock, paper, scissors, and he let her have immunity, it does show us that she is a noble person who keeps her word. I won't vote for Clarence tonight because I told him I wouldn't do that and he honored his word, then I feel like I've got to do the same. What seems to make little sense before is given some context here, you see Clarence is about to be voted out of the tribe in a unanimous vote, but T-Bird is the lone person who doesn't vote against him. That is because she votes against Lex instead. She identifies him as a big threat in the game, and, well, she throws her vote against him. I think you're a wonderful, fascinating person, but your leadership strength and skills make me a little nervous for down the road, so I'm giving you my vote. As a side note, with Clarence gone, the advantage is now down to five to four on Bronze favor. They had been wanting to get rid of Clarence for a while, and this seemed like the perfect chance. Episode eight is a recap episode. We're not gonna look at it since it isn't part of the overall story as much as it is like simply bonus content you would find on a movie's DVD or Blu-ray. 
episode nine comes and uh, Lex is PO'd about receiving that one vote. And that may be an understatement. So much so that he starts a massive witch hunt and acts completely irrational. I will not live with a snake. Yeah. I will cut the head off of whoever it is. I'm gonna slit their throats. Now this is probably the best result that T-Bird could have gotten from laying that one vote on him or on anyone, though she couldn't have predicted this. She recognizes the madness that is ensuing and tells us that her best play here is to, well, be quiet, as Lex is on the suspicion that Kelly, a um, former member of Baron, is the one who did it. Lex even says to uh, T-Bert's face that he doesn't suspect her at all. I have, I have no suspicion at all, as far as you're concerned. I'm just gonna let this thing go now that whoever it is is probably gonna hang themselves. Ethan and Lex go on a reward together, which gives Tiber the chance to rally the old Sambaru troops. She wants to band them together against the Baron tribe. She wants them to be a voting block again, just agree on something for once. And she says they have to make a move at this tribal council. There's no time to wait, and everyone seems to be in agreement over this. Believe it or not, God bless her, Teresa apparently gathered Kim and, and Brandon back under the original Samburo wings. If we're gonna make a move, it has to be this trial. Right. It has to be. Right. This is our only chance. While T-Bird is gathering the troops to get rid of Lex, Lex is gathering troops to get rid of Kelly since he is certain that she is the one who betrayed him. And he heard Kelly talking to Frank and T-Bird, and he distinctly heard her say the words, free agent. At Tribal, Brandon goes against the Sombaru plan and votes to get rid of Kelly since he made a promise to Lex. This is a kicker. I made a promise to Lex that I would vote this way tonight. T-Bird did not make a bad move here, but Lex made an even better move. However, this does work out as Kelly goes home and now the advantage of Baron is no more. They're tied four to four. The tribe has spoken. Episode 10 comes and goes and nary a word is heard from T-Bird. But despite this lack of content, an important shift in the game happens for her. As for some strange reason, everyone votes to remove Brandon. Except Brandon, of course. Frank, you have been nothing but rude, grouchy, and a poor sport. And the last few days with you have been insufferable. T-Bird and Frank sacrifice Brandon and also sacrifice their 4-4 tie they previously had, now leaving them down 4-3, and we don't hear from T-Bird why she decided to make this decision. The tribe has spoken. Episode 11 comes, and with that, it is the Survivor Auction. Fun and games are abound as T-Bird wins a massive hoagie and someone asked her about it. So, come up and have a bite, woman. Good enough to make you wanna slap your mama. <laughs> it is now after the immunity challenge and it looks like one of the old Sambaru members will be a goner. No one from Moran is slipping and to top it all off, Frank is having a political rant about how much the liberals are screwing over the working class man. Can't help it, these little liberal special right. interest groups that the media give open market to instead of the average working okay, class American enough. that founded this country. <laughs> no matter how accurate or how much you agree or disagree with this statement, it's just a terrible idea to do this on Survivor, let alone when it's tribal council day and your head is on the chopping block. T-Bird sees how this is making everyone uncomfortable and asks Frank to stop it. And Lex is going like this, they're, you know, even sitting over there not saying a word, but I can tell it's getting to him too. And I'm thinking to myself, Frank, cut it, stop. T-Bird recognizes the precarious position her alliance is in and seeks to change their fortunes. She sees the obvious, which is that there is no way Kim Johnson is beating Ethan, Lex, or Tom and it's plain, plainly obvious to the audience. They have played much better games and have a much better social standing than she does. She lays out a very convincing, logical argument to Kim, who doesn't seem to care since she is so loyal to Ethan. Good move by Teresa, but she's stonewalled here. Now Ethan's, Ethan's gonna take the whole thing. He's great. What can you say negative about Ethan? Nothing. T-Bird and Frank seem to recognize that he is a goner, and based on pre-tribal conversations, she votes against him in order to preserve a chance she has to last longer in the game. Despite doing this, she also cares deeply for him and cries on her way back from the voting booth. I'm gonna tally the votes, right? Travis spoke. Episode 12 comes and it is the family challenge. Everyone has a family member to send in a videotape and when T-Bird sees hers, she has a very strong emotional reaction. Hello, mama. It's great, it's great. 
Once again, before Tribal Council, T-Bird tries her best to flip Kim Johnson. While her offer isn't as enticing anymore since she is down 4-2 to two, and a Kim flip would make it 3-3, three to three, they know they could vote out Lex though and win since he has previous votes against them, so in a tiebreaker he'd be gone. Kim seems to take the offer more seriously this time. It's another good effort on T-Bird's part though, and she seems to be getting under Kim's skin. It's just a shame that Kim won't flip. T-Bird's last remaining Sombaru tribe mate goes home, making her the last Sombaru. The tribe has spoken. T-Bird's got, she's got a lot of fire in her belly, and I know that there's nothing more dangerous than a desperate animal. It is the finale of T-Bird's story. T-Bird knows she still has a shot of staying if she can flip Kim and one other person. That's a much taller order than previously when all she needed was Kim, but she still has a chance. Tree Meal comes and everyone gets a letter from home. Once again, we see how much T-Bird cares about her family through another strong emotional reaction. Family! Lex wins the reward challenge, and with that, he gets a nice truck. And uh, heads up, he's been winning a ton of challenges, just for context. This causes instant jealousy among the castaways, except with T-Bird. With that truck, Lex is going to ride with Probst into a local village and deliver a year's worth of medical supplies that have to do with HIV and AIDS. She is really touched by this because she tells us how her brother passed away due to uh, HIV or AIDS, and she loves the survivors helping the local Kenyans. Very emotional for me because my brother passed away of AIDS. So right away when I saw that, it just brought back all the emotions of everything. Later on in the episode, we see something very interesting. Kim Johnson approaches Ethan about voting out Lex next. It looks like T-Bird's seeds are finally bearing some fruit. And it hasn't been Lex and Tommy. I mean, it gets them too far to have that happen to you. I am absolutely trying to work a deal. Ethan doesn't really confirm to Kim either way of what he's going to do. So T-Bird gets back to work on Kim and Tom. Supposedly, Tom said he will do it, meaning flip, if the numbers are there. Tommy, on several occasions, has tried to get Lex voted off. He actually told Teresa that Lex should be the next one to go. Though we don't see him say that on camera, and Kim seems like she's actually on board with the plan this time. What if Lex doesn't get immunity and I can get Tom to vote Lex off? And she said, did she do that? She said, it's not too early now to do that. And I'm thinking, well, hey, she's waking up a little bit. But unfortunately for T-Bird, Lex wins immunity and the plan is shot in the foot. However, T-Bird never says die and plants seeds in Lex's head by coming forth with honesty about her rogue vote that she cast against him in the merge episode. And she reveals him that Tom has said that he wants Lex gone. This does seem to garner a positive reaction from Lex for T-Bird that he believes her, but this also seems like it's a, well, it's too little too late. If she had done this maybe an episode earlier, this really could have worked out. Teresa, the tribe has spoken. And that's it. T-Bird is gone. She finishes in fifth and was the last remaining member of her tribe. So let's break this down. How is T-Bird as a character? Similar to Tina Weston, she seemed like a sweet, down-to-earth, caring woman who empathized with everyone and wanted to be everyone's friend. Despite this, she was never wishy-washy on where she stood and no one was ever mad at her as a result. She never had a bad thing to say about anyone and no one seemed to have anything bad to say about her. She even befriended one of the hardest men to deal with out there in Frank and made sure he felt included when no one else did. Out of 13 character moments shown on the show, all 13 were heroic and none of them were villainous, making Teresa Cooper a hero in Survivor Africa. Now, how was T-Bird as a strategist? She was smart, and while the Brandon vote didn't make much sense and could have ultimately been the killer to her game, in fact, I think it really was the killer to her game, she seemed to be the strategic mastermind of the Samburu tribe once they made the merge. She spearheaded their movements and rallied them together. She seemed to put in all the legwork when it came into trying to get things done, and she even went out of her way to try to flip a Baron member and was so close to doing it, just in the nick of time. In fact, the only reason she was voted out when she was is because she was a member of the wrong tribe. Had she been on Baron and Kim Johnson on Sambaru, I truly believe T-Bird could have made it to the finale and possibly the final two. Out of 28 strategic moments shown on the show, 20 were smart and eight were dumb, making Teresa Cooper a smart strategist in Survivor Africa. How does Survivor Africa stack up against the previous two seasons? Find out next time. Thanks for watching, and if you like the content you see here, then please support me and this channel on Patreon. That Patreon has every video I release here on this YouTube channel weeks earlier, along with exclusive Survivor podcasts. Thanks for your support.